How's it going, my friends? Back with another episode of the Monochrome Memoirs. It's good to have a growing audience, for sure. Um, that last video I did went semi-viral, I guess. That's what you want to call it. And it's nice that the message is spreading, for sure. Um, I feel like there's a great opportunity nowadays for people who are passionate, who are truthful, and who are really dedicated to this craft, because there's a lot of just mindless and empty information out there that's geared towards entertainment rather than substance. And so I feel like I might be filling that gap and I'm, I'm glad that people are listening. You know, all the new people on the channel, you know, if you've stumbled onto this and you're just thinking that um, it's going to be just gear-related topics, well, I mean, you're probably going to be disappointed because that's not really what I talk about the most. Um, the stuff I do enjoy talking about is what I'm going to get into today. Because I believe that these things are the things that actually matter in photography. Gear matters to a, a certain point, but it's a very small point. It's nothing like it's been blown up to be today, or the focus has been shot. It has been it's like been like a spotlight on gear the last few years that have made it seem like this is the end all be all to the photography conversation, and it's nice to kind of fill a gap where no one else is talking about the stuff that really really makes a difference because the truth of the matter is, is most you know people who are professional photographers or really deeply involved in the craft of photography and doing it for real even if they're making money or not are not doing videos on YouTube and so not to say that there's not you know good YouTube photography channels there are but most of the people out there that are really committed to this are not doing YouTube. So it's nice to be able to step into this position and, and talk to people who are, you know, kind of looking for this type of truth. So I want to talk about today about the laws of photography. Now, these are my personal laws. These are ones that I've, I've picked up over the years that I really have kind of ingrained into my core and the stuff I follow. And it's kind of an unwavering thing. I mean, I've kind of built my own value system around photography that just kind of guides me. Photography is the center of my life. It's the thing that I use to make sense of the world. If I didn't have it, I would be lost. So I care about it very deeply. And these laws I want to share with you guys and kind of pass them, over, pass them on. And, uh, you know, hopefully it'll help. So the first one, I have five here. The first one is truth to instinct. Okay. The world needs unique perspectives. The last thing that we need is more people on a superficial level vying for attention and trying to be like somebody else. Photography is very, very easy to get swept up in somebody in the wake of somebody else's work nowadays. Because we have all these images completely provided to us 24-7. We have Instagram, Flickr, you know, YouTube, just the internet. We're bombarded marketing, billboards, everything. We're bombarded constantly by images, other people's work, style, people telling us that this looks good and this doesn't. This is what you should follow. This is shit. And it's people making decisions for us and trying to influence the way that we see the world. And it's so easy. Unfortunately, most people are followers and most people get caught up in that meat grinder. It takes people in and it chews them up and it spits them out just like everything else. Completely the same. No flavor. No difference. Ultimately just toting or towing the line for somebody else who created that narrative. The world doesn't need that and what most people don't understand is that they get afraid like they'll start photography and they get afraid they're like I have to look this way my editing has to look this way my style has to be like this because this is popular if I do what I really want to do no one's going to listen to me I'll be creating in a void or a vacuum and it's just my work is doesn't mean anything if nobody acknowledges it but the truth is is that the only way to really get acknowledged for real you can have some flash in the pan type of, you know, um, recognition or positive feedback from something that was basically stolen from some something else, some other idea that was kind of just reappropriated for yourself. But it's never lasting and it's never going to give you that sense that you're looking for, that sense of satisfaction. 
People don't understand that if they would just follow their unique perspective on the world, they would create something different by default. I mean, I really hope that people listen to that because there's so many people out there that are looking for a specific style or basing what they want to do off of what's popular or a trend. And it's a losing battle. It's a losing game, 100%. You're always going to lose like that, even if you get some positive feedback or you have some temporary opportunity. It's never going to lead to what you ultimately want, which is a timeless piece of work or a sense that your place in the world really matters through photography. So you need to stay true to your instincts. Whatever it is that you want to shoot, whatever it is that you find interesting, you need to follow that, tug on that thread and follow it. And it may come out to be a piece of crap, but it will always eventually come out to be fulfilling because you know that you're being honest about who you are, what you see in the world. Too many people are focused on everything other than your instinct. And photography comes down to instinct. It really does. It's a, psycho, it's, it's a psycholog psychological, spiritual type of craft. It really is. Yes, people treat it superficially. Some people do, absolutely. But ultimately, it's a psychological and spiritual craft. And if you can follow the natural instinct that you've been given, because you're a unique personality, there's, what, 7.8 billion people in the world, everybody's different. Yes, a lot of people share the same, you know, certain traits or, you know, pick up things or through osmosis from the societies they live in and things like that. But ultimately, if you would allow yourself to really follow your instincts without fear, you would put something new into the world. So truth to instinct, that is the first and most important in my opinion. The second is to getting close. Way too many people are afraid of getting in close. People want to put an 85 on or a 70 to 200 and they want to stand back and not be in people's spaces. I'm here to tell you that the 24 is probably the best lens that you could push yourself to learn because it forces you to get in close. And when you get in close, you can the viewer can feel it. The viewer can feel it. It gets transferred through the image. If you're close to the person that you're photographing or the thing that you're photographing, there's something that's transferred that you can't get if you're further away. Now, obviously, there's times where you're going to be, you know, the situation or the composition calls for, you know, is very zoomed in shot with a bunch of compression or standing back, you know, a big wide shot. We're getting a huge atmosphere type situation. That's not what I'm talking about, guys. What I'm talking about is learning to get in close and making that an objective for every photo shoot that you have because that can transfer the real humanity of the person that you're photographing. I'm kind of talking about shooting people here because that's mostly what I do. But people are too afraid to get into other people's faces or get into other people's situations or area. And there it shows in the work. It suffers for it. Sorry about that. I just hit the microphone stand. But it shows in the work. You know, this is a good example. Is when Sarah and I first started doing weddings, she was very, like during the reception dance floor uh, portion of the, the night, she was reluctant to get into people's faces on the dance floor. I never, ever had that problem since I picked up a camera. I always just followed my instinct. I haven't had an overwhelming drive to tell stories. And I recognized that there is an energy that was transferred if you got in closer. So, you know, even though some type of situations were uncomfortable, I would always do it. So I got on the dance floor, and I still do this today. I am literally on the dance floor. I shoot with a 14 to 30, and I am usually at 14 mil, 14 or 16. And I am on the dance floor in the energy. That's the only way to really transfer the feeling of what's going on in the dance floor is getting on the dance floor. And so Sarah would have a problem. You know, she just felt kind of uncomfortable getting into people's area. You know, it's crazy. You're bumping around to people. You're just like kind of in there. But the thing is, is the energy transfers in the truth of the photograph is the most important thing. You know, I put, I put a, a photo up on my Instagram yesterday 
and I, I was thinking about this quote that I was kind of putting together in my head, and, and I wrote, um, a good photograph does not imitate a beautiful scene. I'm paraphrasing here, but a good photograph does not imitate a beautiful scene. It proves it. A good photograph proves the beauty or the energy of what you're photographing. And proving something is way different than imitating it. So you could work all day to try and manipulate the photo to try and imitate the feeling that was there. But proving it is getting in the space and actually capturing the essence of what's going on. So getting close, guys. Please, don't be afraid of that. Because I promise it will transform your photography. And it will set you above. A click above most people, because most people, especially when they're photographing people, just they, they can't deal with it. They can't deal with the anxiety or the fear of getting a little bit closer than what's comfortable, naturally. The third law, let's move on. Learn your gear and minimize your setup. Now, if you guys have been following this channel for a while, you know that this is what I preach. I mean, this is one of the foundational principles of the monochrome memoirs. I do talk about the Z6 a lot because it's my gear. It's my chosen rig. It's my chosen setup. This is what I've committed to, and this is what I've committed to learning. So I'm going to pass on that information because there's other people out there that need the info, and it's helpful. But... If I had, I could I could have committed to any system in the world, Sony, Canon, Fuji, whatever doesn't matter. To me, anybody like I you know, the the comments are are very um, they're funny because I you know it's overwhelmingly positive. A lot of you guys are just you know great people and I enjoy reading them. But the, every once in a while somebody will trickle in and just just interject some opinion that's just based off of them exalting their camera putting it on some pedestal you know it's like almost like children that are obsessed with their toys it doesn't really make a difference what you use everything has limitations everything is going to need a workaround in some area but to put the gear on a pedestal like it serves a purpose other than being a, just a, a, a paintbrush in the hands of a, a, a more intelligent force, which is a human, is so ridiculous. You need to commit to a system. And this is why I also say when you're choosing a camera brand, it should not be about, you know, all the specs nowadays are basically amazing. You can, you can create unbelievable photos with pretty much anything now. So it should be more about what speaks to you when you put it in your hand. Pick up every single brand, Olympus, Pentax, whatever. Put it in your hand, and what camera feels right. And that's the one that you should go with. And once you discover that, you should commit to it fully. Not look at this versus that brand, who won this war, this and that. It doesn't matter. It's all It all serves to take up space in your head that you could be devoting to going out there and working on your imagination and creating photos that stand the test of time. And you should learn it like the back of your hand. You should know your controls, the way to operate the menu settings, the way to op operate the autofocus, how to get the absolute best out of that camera. You should know it like the back of your hand. It should be like second nature. And as soon as you commit to it, that's what you should. That's your next step is to committing to learn every single button and function until you know it and you can do it in your sleep. And then minimizing the setup. I've done a video on this also of why I use two prime lenses at every wedding. I mean, that's 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 all I use 90% of the time. I do have this, you know, 60 millimeter 2.8 uh, manual focus D lens that I use for detail shots, but, you know, it's, it's for a specific purpose. I use either the 35 and the 85 or the 24 and the 50 on every single wedding, and that's all I use. I've committed to those two focal lengths. Normally, I you know... I started off at the 35 and the 85 most, but then I kind of moved on to the 24 and the, and the 50, and that's kind of where I've been at for a, a while now. It's what I really, really like. But I've, I've, I've committed to those two focal lengths, 
and I know them like the back of my hand. I know exactly where I need to be for the sweet spots. I know exactly what perspective I'm looking for. I know exactly how the lens will operate when I'm shooting. And I have the least amount of gear to get the job done on every single day. I'm not fumbling around with lenses. I'm not showing up to job sites with 50 different lenses and, you know, having to think, oh, you know, or when I deliver a gallery, there's 50 billion different types of focal lengths. It's all a story based on two focal lengths for me minimalist. I want the least amount of gear that I can possibly have that's going to get the job done. And the thing that people don't understand is they think they need more, but the less options you have when you're in a situation like a wedding or a shoot or something like that, the less options you're presented with, the more creativity is going to arise. Because you're not you're not overwhelmed with all these options and these possibilities. It's what do I have? And what can I make work with what I have? And that increases your awareness of the situation, the you know available angles, the available you know positions, and you're more creative as a result. Problem solving rather than being overwhelmed with options. Back to the list number four: create inspiring surroundings. This is a law that's very important in photography. Our outer world influences our inner world. And the inspiration for photos and the creativity that arises, it, it literally does arise within us. Now, I believe that creativity does not come from me specifically. And like As a person, I'm not the one actually creating. I, I believe that I'm taking in information on a, you know, a spiritual level or a physical level from around me. And it's transmuting. It's getting. It's. It, I'm. I'm just lucky enough to have an open door, that it's coming through, and it's being transferred into me, and I'm able to kind of spit it out, into inspiration. Now this doesn't happen all the time. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm always inspired 100%. But I know that if my outer world is all discombobulated and and things are disorganized, things are not beautiful in my surroundings, that I'm that I'm in most of the time, the creativity is less. So if you want to, if you're looking for a boost, if you're looking for a creative, like, you know, boost in your life, start to work on your surroundings, the places that you spend most time. Look around. What's it like? Is it beautiful? Does it look like shit? Does it smell? Is it disgusting? Change that. You know, I've been spending a lot of money on uh, photo books. Sarah and I have been really into photo books lately. We just bought one from Steve McCurry. And uh, we have these books all over the house. You know, coffee table, living room, stuff like that. And it's part of the essence of where we, this is our home. This is where we are in the world. And we want our space that we spend most of the time to be inspiring. And it seeps into us. It does, by, by osmosis. Where you place yourself, where you place yourself is a direct influence on the way you feel inside and the state of mind that you're in when you need to go out there and create new things. So work in your surroundings, guys. Pay attention to what's around you and what you're taking in. Number five and the last one, don't try to be different. I really hope that you guys are still here. You haven't clicked off this video and you're actually listening to this because... This is super important. You should not try and be different. Everybody wants to be different. When they just when they pick up a camera for the first time and they go out there, they want to be different. I'm going to do something different. I want to be my own unique self. I need to create something that's different. That is the wrong way to think about creating something different, ultimately. You shouldn't try and be different. You should try and be yourself. You know... For me, guys, this is probably a good time to talk about this. So for me, ever since I was a little kid, ever since as far back as I can remember, I've always experienced the world as a problem. Like I've always seen things in the world. I've always seen things that are wrong. And I've always felt that there was something wrong with the world. And not in like a morbid way, just I've had a sense of unease. Like I need to explain things. Like I need to... 
I need to make sense of what's going on because it's I, I've never been able just to take things in as they are and just be like 100%. I've never been able just to check out of life. Like, you know, watch football on Sundays and have a couple drinks and then go to work Monday through Friday and just, you know, have a little house and just be happy with that. Like, I, I've always sensed a problem with the way that we have created this world, society or, or whatever you want to call it. And so photography for me is a repackaging and, and, a, and an attempt to make sense of the world. It's me looking at the world in a certain way and it's, it's me being able to put my own stamp on it and, and make sense of what I see. And I would like to think, I, you know, I, like I've said before, I, I, I shoot about maybe five to ten photos every single year that I'm really proud of. Probably about five to ten. Closer to the six to seven, probably, that I'm really proud of. But those ones make me very proud because I know that they're a unique perspective. They weren't me going out there and just trying to make something for the exposure of it. It was an honest attempt by me to explain what I see and in, in the, the things that I feel. And if you would just approach your photography like that, just repackaging the world as you see it, you would naturally be different by default. This obviously goes back and ties into number one, truth to instinct. But it's a turning away of that, of that mentality and that mindset of trying to be different than everybody else. Because if you tr the more you try to, to do something in this craft, like try to create a certain style or try to be different than what's going on, the more it's going to elude you, in my experience. So you should not try and be different. You should just try and be yourself. And a different style and a different feeling will develop eventually. It's not a light switch. You need to learn how to really trust yourself, really go deep into the things that you're feeling and examine the world and ask yourself questions of why you see things a certain way. And then shoot what you feel. And you will create something that's different. I promise. So those are the laws of photography, guys. Really, really hope that you guys enjoyed this and this provided some type of help to somebody out there. Uh, the, like I said before, these are the things that I love talking about. So um, I appreciate the feedback and I appreciate the support of everybody. Till the next video, my friends.